What is up everyone? Welcome to the channel. I'm Scratch. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. I am currently on the test server guys and in today's video we're gonna take the new Void Champion from the Shadow King in for a spin but only in the Hydra Clan boss. We're gonna see his full potential. Now I've released a video yesterday on the Champion where we kind of like tested him in Arena a little bit in Hydra just to kind of like see what he can do and oh boy okay that's all I'm saying. First I do want to say that I butchered his name. It's actually no L in here. It's uh, Eyasu, or you're kind of like pronouncing it in a, in a similar way. And yes, I did uh, uh, found out quite a few things about him being the most powerful Shogun in the Japanese history. So thank you for that, guys, for correcting me in the comments. Basically, this champion, guys, because I've checked with Plarium already, okay? So nothing is broken on him by any means. I personally don't think he's broken. I just think he's very strong and he's kind of like the next level. He's not uh, looking like he's going to beat Toshiro in terms of damage, but he is very close to it, you know? So uh, maybe with some very high blessings, a crazy team, uh, he does have the potential to... Uh, maybe beat Toshiro, but I really don't think so, to be honest. But he's getting very close to it, so they're pretty pretty tight. So basically, all that makes him to do a lot of damage in Hydra, guys, is the actual passive. Yes, this skill can hit for like 4-5 or five million. This skill can hit for like 4-5 or five million. Now, I'm gonna show you two different builds in today's video. Uh, we're gonna do a full run with the big boy build to kind of like see his full potential. And... We're going to have a more regular build with a more regular team uh, where people can actually see what he can do and understand that he's not uh, broken on a regular team. Now, when I'm bringing in Teox and I'm bringing in all the big guns, most of the damage dealers that are strong will be able to perform better, right? So it's, the pre uh, it's pretty much the same situation for him. With this passive, whenever this champion attacks, all enemies except the initial target receives damage equal to 25% of the damage dealt to the initial target and will ignore 100% of the enemy defense. So basically, when you are attacking decapitated heads, guys, keep in mind they are taking a lot of additional damage, 200% additional of uh, the regular hit, right? So that will boost this damage from the passive a lot. On top of it, it does seem like this passive is a uh, coded in a similar way with Tranda's A2. So he will do a lot of damage. I actually uh, checked with uh, someone from Plarium and they said they watched the video that I posted initially and everything seems fine. So fingers crossed that that's the way they intended to have this uh, uh, champion work in the Hydra clan boss. This right here is the very first build and this is a very achievable build for pretty much every endgame player, right? We have a Savage, we have a Cruel set, and by the looks of it, it's all 5-star gear, except the amulet and the banner. Total stats, we have 6.7k attack, 221 speed, full crit rate, 275 crit damage. Now, of course, I do have my Hydra uh, area bonuses almost max, which will give me some additional stats. But either way, that's not the main point. The main point is what the champion can do in a regular team, rather than bringing all the OP Hydra champions under the same roof, you know? Masteries, we have a uh, Ham Smasher as tier 6, we have Defense, uh, Defense 3 right here. Uh, blessing, Haven Cast is the only good Blessing that we can give him at 5 star that will actually increase the damage. But that's pretty much uh, everything about the very first build. Let's see what he can do in Hydra and then we're gonna move over to the big boy build and the big boy team. This is what we're running right here, guys. We have Mishinaki, we have of course Valda Destroyer, we have Ugo, we have uh, Eyasu, we have... Uh, Mikage and Molly Tanker. Now, of course, if you have Mikage, you're going to want to pair them together once you're going to get to summon this champion. But let's see what we can achieve with this, uh, with this team, guys. Maybe the Nargigante Archer would have been a better option instead of Mishinaki, just to get a bit of uh, healing, to get a decreased speed, because we have no increased speed or decreased speed. So that will cost us a little bit, you know. Uh, let's put a Hex. Provoke. Beautiful. And uh, let's put Weaken and decrease attack. Uh, one thing that's very important, if you have Reflect damage on any of the Hydra heads, it's very likely, very likely that uh, the passive will kill him. You know, if he deals enough damage, uh, he's gonna die. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Let's take down the Head of Mischief. Okay, he provoked pretty much every single champion in the team, almost. Pretty damn crazy. That disgusting RNG though. The head of red. 
Let's try to take down the... Okay, no hacks on the head of Mischief. Damn. That was unfortunate right there. Thankfully, he's not gonna get a cleanse done. The head of Decay. I'm not gonna do a full run with this team, guys. I'm just quickly gonna show you that the damage does not scale as crazy as with, uh, uh, as with the other team, you know? So let's, uh, let's see who we can attack in here. Uh, yeah, let's, let's target this head because the head of Mischief has no hacks, so that is a bit of a problem. Okay. Counterattack, do it. And one thing that I've noticed, he doesn't, uh, doesn't counterattack. I mean, he doesn't counterattack. He doesn't put an additional hit on decapitated heads while under debuffs. Only on living heads. Which is a bit strange. I'm not 100% sure why that's, the, why that's the case. Because it's still a target that has uh, debuffs on. So we should get that extra hit, you know? Okay. Damn, so many poisons. But you see, turn 11, we have 8 million damage. Uh, it's definitely not the same story like... When you have a Teox in here, when you have a Feral, uh, when you have Vincenza, when you have Krisk, you know, to have everything uh, lined up perfectly. But it's still, it's still solid damage. It's still solid damage. Let's try to take some of these heads down. Because they are becoming annoying. Especially uh, the head of Mischief and the head of, uh, the head of Decay right there. Okay, we killed one. We killed one. Let's try to kill this one too. Mishinaki! Thank you. Bring in that passive. Beautiful, beautiful. So now we have, uh, we're going to have all of the heads decapitated. We should be able to land that defense down pretty soon and the weaken, if I'm not mistaken. We drop their Termiter as well. So the moment of truth is here. How much damage we can ramp with this build? You see, it's not going as crazy. And this just shows you that the champion is not broken uh, at all, okay? He's a solid champion, but not broken. And when you are... Uh, combining most of the top damage dealers with the right champions and you're creating the ultimate crazy team, that's when you're going to start seeing much better results. And it's the same with him as well. It's the same with Ninja. It's the same with Toshiro. Like, if you would run Toshiro in this team, he's not going to do that crazy damage either, you know? That's 100%. That's if you run Ninja in this team, he's not going to do that crazy damage either. So uh, it's pretty much uh, as, simple, uh, as simple as that, to be honest. It's still very good damage, turn 18, 32 million, but it's nothing as spectacular as you're about to see in the, in the next run, you know? So uh, let's try to hit that decapitated head one more time with him, if, we, if the time allows us, hopefully. Okay, no. So we have 33 million damage, let's end battle and see what score we have here. So Mishinaki with 7.2, Valda Destroyer with 10, and he has a 6-star Crushing Grand, and he's plus 1. And uh, he's on a Merciless with much better stats. I'm going to show it to you in a second. And we have uh, Iyasu with 13.2. Uh, so he's still doing better damage, don't get me wrong. But nothing as OP. Uh, and I'm going to show you the total stats. 8.1k attack. If I'm going to put in the Hydra battles, you see. 8.4, 335 crit damage, 244 speed. So we have like, what? 2,000 more attack on him, more or less. Uh, and we have around uh, 30 pre damage, if I'm not mistaken. And 6 star, uh, six star blessing, crushing grand, which is pretty damn uh, OP. And you've already seen the stats on him before, but let me just quickly uh, show you. So 1.4k uh, less attack and 30 less pre damage, basically. And the speed is pretty much, uh, pretty much the same. Moving over to the big boy team, guys. This is what we're running, okay? This team right here is. The world record team, of course, with Toshiro instead of, uh, uh, instead of him and with higher blessings, etc. But we're going to see what he can do in this team, okay? I have very high expectations. We're going to do uh, a couple of uh, minutes on manual just to kind of like show you a bit what sort of firepower he can uh, actually bring to the team. So let's do an ally attack, get our, uh, our buffs on. They are all sort of different combinations in here. Example, if we would put a uh, Yinchensa on a 9-piece protection, but unfortunately I cannot do that. And I'm really debating if it's actually worth it to put her on a 9-piece protection over keeping her on curse set and utilizing the A1 for ally attacks more often. Just because he splashes so much damage, I really just don't think that uh, bringing in 5% additional damage from the protection set uh, and putting Cursed on Krisk instead 
will actually give me more damage. I actually think that uh, not using Inchens as A2 and using the A1 instead will deliver more damage. But that's something that requires a bit of more testing and a bit of more math uh, behind the whole uh, the whole thing. So we're gonna uh, open with the A2 on Teox just to basically get um, uh, get of course that increased attack on him. Let's apply the debuffs. Let's provoke. With Feral in the same team, we're going to deal an additional 20% more damage when we have four buffs, which is the case right now. So we're going to open right here with the A3. Pretty good damage. Uh, it will look much, much better once we're going to take these heads down, guys. You're going you're gonna to be like, wow. Okay, you're going to be like, wow. So it is bringing in a lot of damage, which is an amazing thing. We need uh, more powerful damage dealers. I know it is a bit of a power creep to some of the older ones, but it's still something that uh, is required in the game, especially as legendaries, uh, to be able to compete with some of the stronger mythicals, you know? So right here, I'm actually going to hit the decapitated head, uh, but only with a basic skill. I want to apply that defense down and weaken and more debuffs before I'm going to go in with, a, uh, with the A2. So we're going to go with Teox. Now, Teox will make his damage go crazy, okay? That's one of the things that will make this team look broken, is basically combining all of these big boy champions and getting insane results. Like, look at that. 21 million, we jump to 26. No defense down, no weaken. Now, once we're going to apply more debuffs on the target that we want to attack, of course, uh, it will be much better when Teox ally attacks. The more debuffs, the more damage. So check that out. 30 million. And we jumped all the way to 57, okay? And right now we're going to go with the A2. Uh, 1.4, 1.5, we jumped at 80 million. Now we're going to ally attack with Mikage. The damage won't be as good as when Teox is in play. We uh, dealt 15 million instead of 30 or something like that, you know? So it does make quite a bit of a difference when you're using Teox or you're not. That's why in the previous team, where it's uh, more of a regular team, right, for the majority of the players, he's not as insane but he's still very strong right so let's go in again with the uh, teox right here even if he's a weak affinity it doesn't matter you know because the the whole thing is to make uh make the new champion deal crazy damage you know and teox really enables him to do that but look at that turn five we already have 120 plus million damage we're gonna go with the a2 2 million 2.2 million the a2 actually deals more damage than the A3, especially when we have more debuffs on the target, you know. So that's a, that's a pretty good thing. Ally attack with Incensa, you see. Uh, it brought only 2 million damage, but I'll be honest, having a 9-piece protection on her instead of Krisk, it won't really bring us more damage than an ally attack. And when we have everything kind of like lined up, more decapitated heads and stuff, uh, the ally attack is going to become so much more valuable than having that uh, protection set on her, you know? And I'll rather keep her on a curse set, to be honest. But I really need to uh, deep dive into it with a bit of math and stuff to be sure that I'm, uh, uh, I'm telling you the right thing here, you know? So let's take that head down. They still have the life barrier. Of course, the damage that we're splashing is not going to be as crazy because uh, that will bring in damage reduction. So that's one, uh, one thing. Uh, the more you're playing with the team, the more you can actually... Um, experiment and kind of like uh, find a way to keep uh, the heads decapitated for uh, as often as possible to don't have too many of them to kind of like uh, uh, come back at the same time and stuff like this and that will just overall increase the damage you know so that's something to keep in mind as well but either way we're slowly taking them down now one thing to be very careful with uh, is if the reflect damage uh, appears on any of the champions is game over because his passive will kill him. So if you don't have a reviver, uh, it's gonna be very hard to dodge that. And honestly, there isn't much you can do about uh, keeping him alive when reflect damage is on, unless you're really hitting targets that have a toxic cloud or something where you're not able to deal a lot of damage. Now, one more thing that will make him deal more damage than most of the other damage dealers, including uh, Toshiro, is affinity. He's void affinity, he's not gonna get weak hits, he's gonna work on every single rotation, no matter what the game brings at you. So that's one of the, the pros that really puts him at the top over any other damage dealer, is the affinity. Because if you're running a Toshiro, you're gonna get weak hits, no matter what you're doing. Uh, if you're running a Garel, you're gonna get weak hits. If you're running Tranda, you're gonna get weak hits. Now, he's not gonna beat Tranda 
It's not even going to get close to Thranda or anything like that. But being Void Affinity is actually really, really powerful. So look at that. Turn 13 and we have 216 million damage. Super powerful. But let me just quickly show you what he can do once we're going to do a full run and reach the turn limit count. And as you guys can probably notice, this damage is just freaking crazy with this team, right? Uh, with my ninja, which is plus four, uh, six star, I can get around five to six billion on this, uh, on this uh, difficulty with the exact same team. Now with him, we managed to break that. And we are at 7.6 billion on Nightmare, guys. Theox with 560 million. Yinchensa with 1.2. We have, of course, Iyasu with 5.7 billion damage, guys. So he's definitely going to be a super powerful champion for the Hydra clan boss. And I'm actually glad that he's a legendary and not a mythical champion. Because in a way or another, it's slightly easier to get him. And I'm praying to the gods of RNG that Plarium will make this champion a guaranteed. You've seen what sort of damage he can deal in a big boy team. And I quickly want to share the build with you guys so you have a better understanding of what to expect from it. So I do have him on uh, a Merciless set. I actually have, funny enough, I have 8-piece Merciless set on him. Uh, pretty close to get to that 9-piece. So I'm getting additional Kree damage, speed, etc. The main thing is I'm ignoring 35% of the target's defense. Now I only have a 5-star Blessing on him. If I would have a 6-star to put him on Crushing Rand, that of course will boost the damage a bit more. Now total stats on him, guys. Let me just bring in the Hydra Battles because I uh, almost have everything maxed in here. We have 49k HP, 8.6k attack, 2.8k defense, 250 speed, Full crit rate, 342 crit damage. He doesn't require accuracy or resistance. Plus, of course, we ignore an additional 20% uh, of the target's defense. So he does a lot, of, uh, a lot of work. Let me just move my head a bit out of the way so you guys can see all the area bonuses um, clear in here. Pretty good stats. Now, I've tried champions with much better stats. Like if I'm talking about my ninja, uh, he has over 10k attack and he has over 400 crit damage on a very similar build, right? And while Ninja deals a lot of damage in the exact same team, he's not really coming close to it. So I've managed to get Ninja over 3 billion damage. But of course, this new champion is a bit of a different level. So uh, he will 100% be Mera for the Hydra clan boss. In terms of Masteries, guys, I haven't really changed them. We have the exact same thing we had on the initial, uh, uh, on the initial team. I could potentially get Heart of Glory, deal a bit of additional damage, uh, go with Life Drinker because we don't really need Ruthless Ambush and uh, this for, uh, for the Hydra Clan boss, to be honest. So this could boost the damage a little bit. Of course, we're not always going to be on 100% HP, so that's one thing to keep in, uh, keep in mind. This mastery won't always um, benefit uh, our champion. That's why I haven't really bothered to, to change them. As a Blessing, Haven cast is kind of like the best thing that we have available at 5 star for him. There isn't anything else really that will boost the damage more than, uh, more than this except Crushing Rand, but that is only at 6 star. So that was pretty much everything for this video. You've seen his performance on a more regular team. You've seen his performance on a big boy team. It is quite a bit of a difference. He will benefit a lot from having multiple ally attack champions. He will benefit a lot from decapitating uh, all of the heads as often as possible because he will spread more damage with a passive uh, like that. But either way, he's an amazing champion. And I do wish that Platinum would make him uh, as guaranteed in a similar way they've done with Narciss because a lot of people need to have a strong champion for the Hydra clan boss. But that was all pretty much for this video. If you enjoyed the content, smash a like, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate all of you guys watching. Much love and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.